In a post-apocalyptic future, Mallory hears a message on the radio about a safe shelter where everyone is welcome. She gathers her two nameless kids and with a very serious tone, she announces that they'll take a boat down the river, so it's very important for the children to never take off their blindfolds or they'll die. Then she grabs a box with their pet birds and the group leaves their home, using a string trail to reach the boat without seeing. This all started five years ago. Mallory is a pregnant artist who is getting a visit from her sister Jessica. While they chat, they don't pay much attention to the TV newscast reporting on unexplained mass self-deletions that started in Siberia and are now spreading across Europe. Afterward the sisters go to the hospital for Mallory's appointment. The baby checkup goes well, and on their way out, Mallory and Jess notice a woman acting erratic and her head getting hurt against the glass window. It's only worse when they go outside, total chaos has taken over the streets, with people running in panic, crashing their cars, and finding anything useful that can help them self-delete. It seems that whatever was affecting people in Europe has arrived in the USA. Scared, the sisters rush to their car and try to drive away, but suddenly Jessica's eyes turn a weird color and she begins driving frantically, ignoring Mallory's pleas to slow down. The crazy speed causes the car to flip and crash, but luckily both sisters survive. Mallory carefully crawls out only to see her sister step in the middle of a street, where she is killed by a passing truck. Upset and panicking, Mallory begins running with the crowd, which is getting more chaotic and scared by the second as cars start to explode around them. When Mallory is pushed down by the crowd, a woman comes out of a house to help her while ignoring her husband Douglas' objections, but before she can reach Mallory, the woman suddenly goes into a trance. As she talks to an invisible person, the woman gets inside a burning car that soon explodes. Then a man named Tom helps Mallory up and brings her to the house, where Douglas refuses to open the door. However the house owner Greg decides to help and lets them in together with other survivors. Everyone starts sharing their theories about what is going on, like demons or the end of the world, but nobody has a proven explanation. Only one thing is for sure, looking at the entity forces people to self-delete. A couple manages to call their son and hears he is in trouble, so they leave the house to find him regardless of the danger. The TV newscast also shows that the phenomenon is spreading through the whole world, but soon all signals go out so there's no more programming or phone calls. Then the remaining survivors decide to cover all the windows to prevent anyone from looking outside. In present day, Mallory and the kids have been on the river for six hours. She never stops making attempts to contact people over the radio and keeps everyone covered with a blanket, she also regularly checks on the birds in the box. When the birds start getting nervous, Mallory can hear the entity whispering her name and tries her best to ignore it. Back in the past, the group suddenly hears a knock, it's a survivor called Olympia, who begs for help because she's pregnant. Douglas is against letting more people in, but Mallory calls him heartless and they decide to let her in. Mallory grabs a rifle just in case and everyone closes their eyes until they're sure Olympia is harmless. Afterward, Greg volunteers to investigate the situation by watching the outside through his security cameras. The others tie him up to the chair in front of the monitors then leave him alone. Greg concentrates to avoid looking away, and after a few minutes of nothing, his expression changes. The group hears a weird sound coming from the room and rushes inside to discover Greg fell and smashed his head, instantly dying. The others immediately destroy the screen. Later that night, Mallory can't sleep and walks around the house, hearing another weird sound. However it turns out to be Lucy and Felix getting busy together. In the present, Mallory and the children have been on the river for 14 hours when she suddenly hears a man's voice tell her to take the blindfold off because it's safe and even promising food. Mallory tells the kids not to do it and takes out her gun to fire blindly, but all her shots miss and the man jumps on the boat to attack them while the birds start making lots of noise. The man tries to take her blindfold off insisting the entity is beautiful, but Mallory fights him off and after lots of struggle, she manages to kill him with a machete. Back in the past, the group is starting to run out of food, and it's clear by now that help won't be coming. Mallory, Tom, Douglas, Lucy, and Charlie volunteer to go to the supermarket, hoping there's safety in numbers. They paint and cover the windows to avoid even glancing outside and then use the GPS to guide them through the streets, where they keep bumping against abandoned cars and dozens of dead bodies. As they drive around every obstacle, the GPS detects something surrounding the car. They can see a shadow shaking the car with a whooshing sound, so they begin driving faster in panic. The noises and the shaking get worse by the second but eventually the GPS announces they have made it to the supermarket, so they rush inside and don't take the blindfolds off until they have covered all the windows. The group splits and starts gathering all kinds of supplies like food but also things for the babies. Mallory finds some birds and decides to take them as well. Douglas thinks they should stay here, but Mallory scolds him and points out it would be heartless to abandon those in the house. Suddenly the group hears someone knocking on a door and Charlie recognizes a familiar voice, it's his co-worker, who accidentally got stuck in the freezer and is begging to be let out. The group isn't sure if trusting him and opens the door just a little bit to check, causing the birds to go crazy and confirm the man is actually the entity trying to trick them. The man begins yelling the entity should be seen and pushes the door, so Charlie tackles him to send him back into the fridge, allowing the others to lock it again. Then blood begins coming out from under the door, confirming Charlie is dead. 
The group leaves while still hearing the guy's voice begging for freedom. That night in the house, the group hears what sounds like a car being driven away so they rush into the garage, only to discover that Lucy and Felix have gone away with their only vehicle. In the present, Mallory finally takes a break after 24 hours of non-stop rowing. However she's too worried about the kids and soon starts rowing again, but the boat accidentally bumps against a sunken truck. The boy falls out of the boat and Mallory catches him right before he drowns, only to lose their blanket and food in the process. Mallory tries her best to warn him up with a jacket and decides to stop the boat by a shore, where she tells the kids not to move while she goes looking for supplies. Then Mallory connects some string to the boat and explores the woods until she finds a building, where she starts gathering food and a new blanket. Her string can't go on for that long, so she ties it up to the furniture while she continues to investigate. Suddenly she hears a noise and sees the string shaking before a shadow moves outside, so she immediately rushes out of the building, running through the forest as the entity begins whispering her name. Mallory blindingly shoots her gun just in case, which is heard by the little girl and makes her get off the boat to help. Fortunately Mallory moves fast and reaches the child before the entity does, so she drags her back into the boat and yells at her for disobeying her, reminding both kids to leave Mallory behind and save themselves if things get too dangerous. In the past, another survivor knocks on their door and Olympia lets him without checking with the others first. His name is Gary and after Tom checks he isn't hiding anything, Gary explains that only crazy patients can survive the entity. He ran away from some insane guys who escaped from a mental institution and now are out there forcing people to look at the entity, claiming it's beautiful. Douglas doesn't trust Gary and tries to force him out of the house at gunpoint, but Cheryl knocks him out and locks him in the garage while allowing Gary to stay. In the present, Mallory and the kids have been on the river for 38 hours. Mallory covers everyone with a blanket to warn them that they're approaching the rapids, which is the most dangerous part of the journey. Somebody will have to keep their eyes open to navigate, and both kids volunteer, but Mallory remembers promising Olympia she would take care of her daughter if something happened to her, and she can't bring herself to hurt her own son either. In the end, she decides they'll just risk it and go through the rapids without seeing. In the past, both Mallory and Olympia begin to go into labor at the same time. While Tom and Cheryl take the women upstairs to their room, Gary takes out a bunch of drawings of the horrifying creatures and starts making a new one, revealing he's actually one of the crazy people who escaped from the mental institution. Then he takes Mallory's birds and puts them in the fridge before tearing the papers off the windows, which Douglas sees from afar. When Tom comes down and finds the drawings, Gary immediately knocks him out, then he opens the front garage door hoping to make Douglas see but he quickly covers his eyes. Upstairs, Olympia and Mallory give birth to two very healthy and beautiful babies. Suddenly Gary enters the room and pulls the blinds up in front of Olympia, who immediately falls for the entity. Mallory manages to take the baby from her before Olympia runs to the window to self-delete. Afterward Gary grabs Cheryl's face and forces her to open her eyes to the outside, causing her to also self-delete with scissors. While Mallory hides with the babies under a blanket, Douglas shows up with the rifle and does some blind shooting, hurting Gary in the arm. However Gary quickly retaliates by jumping on Douglas to push him through the railing and stab him with the scissors. The rifle falls to the floor and Tom tries to grab it at the same time as Gary, causing the weapon to go off. Mallory hears two shots before someone approaches her but luckily is Tom, who has won the fight. Five years pass, and Mallory and Tom have been living together while raising the kids as a couple. They have a whole system in place to keep the house safe and use string to go looking for supplies when they need them. One afternoon, Mallory is out on a supply run when she hears some cars driving nearby. She waits for them to leave and rushes back to the house to tell Tom about it, so they agree they won't go out alone anymore. That night, the two receive a radio transmission saying there's a safe compound with plenty of supplies and food down the river. The voice on the radio even gives them instructions, which Tom writes down on a map. Apparently seeing will be required to cross the rapids, and the voice recommends following the sound of the forest birds because they can tell when the entity is around. Tom wants to go to the compound, but Mallory refuses because she thinks it's a trap. Sometime later, while the family goes out to look for supplies together, they hear the cars again, so Tom goes to distract them while Mallory and the kids get out safely. The drivers are a group of insane people who ask Tom to look at the entity, and when they notice Mallory and the kids, Tom opens fire on them. He manages to kill a few of them but they shoot back at him, so if Tom wants to save his family, he has no choice but to take off the blindfold to shoot with a better aim. After killing them in seconds, Tom sees the entity and self-deletes. Mallory has a breakdown over her loss and decides it's time to leave for the shelter after all. Now it's been 42 hours on the river and the group is approaching the rapids pretty quickly. When they reach the bumpy waters, Mallory tries her best to get through, but the boat flips over and everyone falls out. Mallory calls out to the kids and finds the boy in the water, but the girl has made it to the land. Thankfully Mallory finds her quickly because the girl has a bell that she keeps ringing. Then the trio walks through the woods where they hear the entity whispering to them using Tom's voice. Mallory tries to run away from it, only to fall down a small hill. The voice goes after the kids and the boy almost takes off his blindfold, but Mallory quickly finds him and stops him. She can't find the girl though, 
so she starts apologizing for yelling at her and the sound of her voice allows the girl to go back to her. Then the family follows the sounds of the birds, but they have to start running when the entity suddenly surrounds them. They fall a couple of times, but eventually they make it to the compound and the door is open before the entity can reach them. Inside the compound, Mallory's eyes are checked and soon everyone is cleared to stay. They meet the voice from the radio and Mallory discovers that the compound is a school for the blind filled with survivors but also birds, who work as an alarm. Now they can finally begin living properly, Mallory decides to name the kids, the girl is called Olympia after her mother, and the boy is named after Tom. Then Mallory opens her box and frees the birds to be with the others in the sanctuary. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.